Help us. It's cooler in the choir, ain't it, choir? No? All right. If you would, take the celebration hymnal, the celebration hymnal, and open it up to number 438. Number 438. Let's all stand as we sing, Jesus Saves. Number 438. <laughs> We have heard the joyful sound, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the tidings all around, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land, climb the steeds and cross the waves, onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, wept it on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, tell to sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, thank the islands of the sea. Echo back the ocean caves. Her shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom. When the heart for mercy craves, sing and try for the tune. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hill and deepest caves. This is our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Brother Tommy Cassaberry, would you lead us in prayer, please? come out this way, Lord. Thank you for each mom that's here. Yes, yes. I thank pray you, that you'll bless it on each yeah. one, dear Lord. Lord, I pray that you'll be honored here today. I pray that you'll be glorified. I pray that each one here we came for you, dear God, that you would be honored and glorified. And Lord, if there is someone here that don't know you, this would be a great day, dear Lord, that they'd get saved. And I pray that you just prepare that heart. May everything be said and done your will and for your, your sake. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. Before I forget, this ring was found in the fellowship hall. So if you think this might be yours, it's got some blue stones and some clear stones. Anyway, it was found in the fellowship hall. It's right here. If it belongs to you. There'll be no evening service tonight. On the 14th, Saturday at 5, be youth rally with preaching by Brother Dean McNeese and singing by the York family. This says, compared to Methuselah, we're all youth, so no age excuses. Come join us and get a blessing. On 522, Sunday at 6, will be a graduation party for Hallie Brown, and we've got an invitation here to her graduation Saturday. Is that right? Okay, graduation May the twenty, May the twenty seventh, at seven p.m. So if y'all can come, please do. Um, on five twenty nine Sunday, it's Youth Sunday with Brother J T Gorm. Uh, that evening, we got Brother Bobby Barnes who'll be with us. June the fourth, Saturday, we'll be handing out VBS flyers, and then June the fifth through the tenth is Vacation Bible School. Please be praying about that. If you'd like to help, please let Miss Carol know. In special prayer, remember Peggy Bray, Carol Elkins and her husband, 
continue to pray for Jenny Dalton, Ms. Chris, and Angela Payne's daughter. Um, any other announcement that we need to make at this time? Brother Chuck. Yes, ma'am. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the vestibule for the Vacation Bible School t-shirts. So don't forget to sign up so I can get them ordered. All right. So if you want a VBS t-shirt, you sign your paper on the, sign your name on the paper. Anything else? All right, if you would, be turning to number 437 in the celebration hymnal, number 437. I want to read something. This says, it's, uh, this says, our primary task. A lighthouse keeper gained a reputation as being a very kind man. He would give free fuel to ships that miscalculated the amount of fuel needed to reach their destination to port. One night during a storm, lightning struck his lighthouse, put out his light. He immediately turned on his generator, but it soon ran out of fuel, and he had given his reserves to passing ships. During the dark night, a ship struck the rocks, and many lives were lost. At his trial, the judge knew of the lighthouse keeper's reputation as a kind man and wept as he gave sentence. He accused the lighthouse keeper of neglecting his primary responsibility to keep the light shining. The church can so often get caught up in legitimate acts of kindness, standing for different things, but our primary task is to warn sinners of danger. We are to keep the light of the gospel shining so that sinners can avoid the jagged edged rocks of wrath and escape being eternally damned. Remember, our primary task is to share the gospel. Amen. Let's sing, send the light. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless wave. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today, send the light, send the light. And the golden offering at the cross we lay, send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light, and the Christ-like Spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. If you would turn over to number 440. 441, number 441. 
Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We for the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Though they are slighting him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, plead with them gently, he will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feelings lie buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, cords that are broken will vibrate once more. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it, Strength for your labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Till the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Let's all stand as the choir comes down, if you would. Greet your neighbor this morning.
I love y'all. Go sit down. Have a seat. All right. Good to see y'all. Y'all can be seated. found out this week that if you have a deer population that needs to be thinned out, <laughs> Miss Stevie knows how to get rid of deers. She needs to borrow your car to do it. <laughs> and she keeps blaming it on Brother Chuck. I'm telling you, just because it's Mama's Day doesn't mean you get to do that. So, I, I was calling all my, I have to say this, Brother Johnny. I was calling all of my senior saint ladies, making sure they was all right after the storm. And the first one that came to my mind was Johnny Bradford. I called him. I said, I told him, I said, I'm calling all my ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it went silent for a while. So he said this morning, when you ask all your moms and the ladies to stand this morning for Mother's Day, can I stand? I said, sure. <laughs> I, need, I need two of them. Oh, yeah, by the way, seriously about this. Brother Larry and Linda York's house got ransacked and stolen from the other day. They live just south of town off of Highway 11. So... Make sure your places is locked up and kept up. They took everything they had, so y'all be praying for them and watch out for each other. All right, I need two of my ushers to come forward. I'm glad that all everything in heaven can't be ransacked, can't be stolen. It's not going to rust away. It's there forever. I thank God that he's faithful. Brother Logan, go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all. Thank you for bringing us all here this morning. Thank you for everything you've already done for us. Jesus. Sunday school and this past week, Lord. Uh, please bless everyone here and give him a message. Please, God, God I pray that you touch it now. Please help the visitors and allow them to God, I pray. be helped by it. And um, Lord, please bless this offering. Allow us to use this money for whatever your will may be. Amen. All right, kids, come on up. Let's take up our missionary offering.
We ought to be like my son just now. He just, he's never done that before, but he ran down front because he wanted that big bucket and he was so proud. <laughs> but he was excited. He wants to take up a lot of money and he wants the biggest bucket. So we, you know, we, we get older and we just don't really want to do anything for the Lord, anything that's going to be embarrassing like that. But kids just don't think anything about that. They're just happy. Uh, I was thinking about it doesn't matter how advanced this world gets, how we've got, you know, our computers and our phones and how fast life goes. In the, in the book of Matthew chapter 6, the Lord talks about things that are just timeless. You know, he talks about how he takes care of the birds of the air and he talk, takes care of the flowers of the field, you know, and um, just talking about how much he cares for us and I was thinking about 1 Kings chapter 17. We know that the Lord sent Elijah to the widow. He was going to feed Elijah through the widow. And, and um, he told her, he said, Will you get me a little bit of water and a little bread that I may eat? And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth." And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. And I like to think about, you know, the Bible doesn't describe it, but I like to think that every time she looked up at those jars, I don't think they were full but I feel like when she reached her hand in, there was enough for that day. 
And um, I think that in here, a lot of us, have, we think that our jars are empty and they may look empty, but I bet if we put our hands in there, there's enough for today. Right. And um, I'm thankful that the Lord, if he takes care of the little birds, he takes care of the flowers, surely won't he take care of us? This song says that every need he supplies. I ask the dear Savior what he had purchased when for me at Calvary he died. For all my past and all my problems he just said that he would provide. He said every need supply, every need supply. If I had to name the greatest blessing He's given, how could I decide? For since He saved me, I just have to that every need he supplied. He said every need supplied. Every need supplied. all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He satisfies my Supplies. Jesus, He's all I need. He said, Every need supplied. Every need supplied.
Happy Mother's Day, moms. Thank you. Thank you for all your kids that come to be with your mama today. Thank you. I, I mean, really, thank you. They appreciate it. I was watching the mamas out there that had their kids with them, and they're smiling. They're happy. I thank you for being with your mama. Um, I'm going to go see my mama after, right after church. She was in the hospital last week, three days, and had a heart cath done. So we tearing out right after church today to go spend time with her. Some things that I want to remember about my mama, and I'll always remember about my mama is, one, she is a praying lady. But the other one is, I remember she used to hold me sometimes, or we'd be in the car, either one, and she'd start singing, Jesus loves me, and all of us kids would ask her to sing it again. And we'd make her sing it for two hours. I had a good mama. She sung it for two hours. She'd say, let's change to another song. I said, no, mama, sing that one again. And she would. I remember coming home. Y'all have heard this story many times. But I could. we come home and we was coming in the back door. We walked from school. It was right behind the house. We got to the back door. Mama's in there having a time with the Lord. I mean, she is in another world with the Lord. And we just watched her from the door. We didn't even walk in. And we was watching her walk up and down the hallway into the living room. And she was praising and singing to the Lord. I don't ever want to forget that. I remember as a little kid that as she was putting us all to bed, every once in a while she'd walk in there to the bed. She would pick up the sheet and sling it way up in the air and let it float down on us. And she would either quote a verse or uh, sing a song. And you're probably thinking, boy, are you trying to say your mama was an angel? I'm not saying that sometimes she beat me when I didn't need it. <laughs> There's many times she beat me when I didn't need it. It was my brother's fault. And, uh, but uh, I had the best mom, the best mom. Anybody want to brag on their mom before we get into the service? Oh, Miss Scaly. I'd like to thank the Lord for my mom. She's always been with me. Amen. She loves me so much. Amen. Amen. My mom's a mechanic, and I'm going to brag on her. She's got a dad's job. She was married to a preacher. They said she had a hard life. That's a job. I figured you did, but I didn't. Tell your mama the day you love her if she's still around. Forever. You ain't going to have that forever. If the Lord tarries, yeah. And none of it worked. Amen. Now we know your problem. You didn't get enough whipping. <laughs> well, Jack. Me too, brother. I know. Amen. I'm with you.
Amen. Amen. Where would we be at without our mama? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I figured you did, brother. That's really what I thought. Amen. 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 She hadn't forgot a bit that I deserved a whooping, but I thought I got away with it. So she called me then. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Oh, so yeah. Amen. We sang that song in the youth about never seeing the righteous forsaken. Every time we sang that song, it reminds me of uh, one time we didn't have a car. We lived on Back Valley Road, and we had to walk down here to the food store to get groceries. And me and her and Jimmy walked down there, and everything we bought had to fit in six bags because we all carried two bags of beef back to the house. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Oh, you got to outdo him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And when she first asked for it, the Romans Bible, my sister thought she wanted the one that she currently had. And she said, uh, my mom wanted that Bible, and I don't want to give that up. She said, I don't want that Bible. I want that one that's in the door. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah.
Yeah. Um, I've had a really good blessing here at this church. I got to grow up with two out of the three sets of my grandparents coming to this church. Um, four aunts, actually, of one point six aunts, were all here. Um, my granny, my meemaw, they all served. So I've had a very great um, example of women in this church. And I know all the work that mom puts in. All right. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 19, verse 19. You don't have to turn to it. Yes. That's right. Amen. Miss Gibbs. Amen, Miss Liz. I just want to be a little bit different and embrace the fact that she's so big and in love with the family that I have. And God bless her. Not only do I have two Christian communities in my life, my son, but I was able to bless the undeserving of blessing being baptized. Amen. My son was baptized. Amen. 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 So true. No. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. You don't take. First one, first one, I thank God for every day. Yes, sir. Um, Amen. And I know this is going to sound a little prideful, but uh, I just know I'm the smartest and most humble and most handsome man in the 
I can tell. You're very humble, brother. Very humble. Of course, you like Logan too, don't you? We'd be in trouble without our mamas. Amen. Anyway, the Bible says to honor thy father and thy mother. That was Matthew 19, 19. I mean, it's real. It's got just a little more in there. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But honor thy father and thy mother that come all the way from the book of Exodus chapter 20. It is the fifth commandment. Five being the number of grace. Can I tell you, if you've got a godly mother, you've been graced. No doubt. It's five till. I'm going to do what preachers normally don't do. I've got a three-point outline. So we're going to preach five. We're going to preach one outline. It was the outline of the last one of Salome. Most people who wouldn't know who Salome is, she's only mentioned in five places in the Bible. Only two times by her name. She's in the Gospels, Matthew and Mark, the most. Salome is the mama of James and John. Her husband is Zebedee, a fisherman. And it must have been a pretty well-to-do fisherman because the Bible said he had also hired servants. And his two boys worked with him. And when Jesus came walking on the shore and he saw James and John, he looked over at them and said, Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. The Bible said they left the boat, left the nets, and they left their daddy with the hired servants and they followed Jesus. That tells you pretty much about the family life that they had. But I want to go to one place. We're going to cover this and this is going to be the only one point. Salome one day was walking with her two boys and the rest of the disciples and with Jesus being there. And if you really got a real godly mom, there's one desire on her heart. And that desire that she has is for her kids to have the best. It's for her kids to get more than what she gets. Why she'll give up the food on her own plate that you might be able to eat. She'll give up money to buy her home clothes and she will buy you her kids clothes. She will make sure they're happy. She will make sure they're at their ball games. She will make sure they're at their practices. She'll make sure that they're getting to watch what they want to watch. She'll make sure everything is supplied before she gets it. That's what a godly mama does. Really, that's what any mama does. But a godly mama will take it to the next step because, yeah, she'll want her kids to have clothes and food and shoes, and friends. She'll want them to laugh and smile. 
But a godly woman, a godly mama will want her kids to know God. More than anything else, you're sitting here this morning and you're my, my, sitting there with your mama and I don't know if you're saved or not, but you're thinking, boy, mama did a good job. Mama did clothe me. Mama did feed me. Mama did cook. Mama did clean. Mama did all this stuff and sewed. And if she's a sewer, most ladies don't sew nowadays. But what you don't know is, if your mama is one of them godly ladies, that faithful to, to the Lord, faithful to the house of God, faithful to give God what directly belongs to be hers from her heart, then what you don't know is, she's been praying that you could get next to God. She's been praying night and day. She thinks about it. She dwells on it that you will walk with the Lord. And so here is Salome walking with the group, with the disciples. She's a follower of Jesus Christ herself. Boy, she don't miss a beat. You study her life. She's one of the ladies that stood there at the cross of Calvary. She's one of the ladies, the first ones at the tomb with Mary Magdalene. She went all the way to the end. She was one of the first ladies to see the resurrected Lord. This lady... When, when her sons quit and wasn't there, she's still getting it. You got a mama like that? Nobody else will go, but mama will go. Nobody else will do, but mama will do. What you don't know is her main thought, her heart's desire, is for each one of her kids to know God. Salome there now is walking with all the rest of the pack. Jesus probably walking in front. I could see it. They stopped somewhere along the way. This part ain't in the Bible. This is just from my own mind. I'll get to the Bible part. And maybe Jesus has sat down and He was talking to two or three disciples. And Mama's standing there with James and John. They're already old. They already should have their own life. They already should be making their own decisions. But you know Mama's. And mama knowing that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the one that's going to come up and set up His kingdom. He's the one that's going to rule Israel and rule the world from the throne of David. And she believes it with a whole heart. Whether James or John did, that didn't matter to her. She believed in Him. She trusted in Him. And about that time, Jesus over there talking, she's waiting her turn. And the Bible said that she went before Jesus with James and John. Mama's got a way of doing that. That's a pretty girl. You need to go ask her out. But Mama, I already got... Nah, but she's a better girl than the one you got. You need to go get that one. But Mama... And by the way, you shouldn't have wore that shirt. It does not match. <laughs> And if you don't do it quick enough, she'll run over there and go, you notice my boy? You got the wrong shirt on, but man, he's a good boy. <laughs> Ain't got no color schemes, but man, he's a good boy. And you're like, Mom. He took, she took him over there to Jesus, them two over there to Jesus. Said, Jesus, I got something to ask you. I got a desire. I want a big ring. I want fancy clothes. I want a brand new car. I want a better house. Fix my two kids. If I was Miss Liz, that's what I'd be my main thing. Fix my boys. None of that. You would think her desire, maybe, Lord, I want to walk with you more. I, I want to know you closer. What's your favorite? You know, tell me some things about you that I don't know. No, no, no. It says, here's James and here's John. Can they sit beside you when you get on the throne? Can one get on the right and the other one get on the left? Her desire was for her two boys to be next to Jesus. If you got a mama 
that's tried to get you next to Jesus, you ought to love on her. If you got a mama that will take you to the throne of God, you ought to honor her. If you got a mama after you kept turning your back years and years and you didn't want it, I don't believe in it, I don't like it, but she still keeps bringing you back to the throne, man, you ought to run to her, kiss her on her cheek and tell her she's the best thing that's ever happened to you. Because I'm telling you, the things of this world is only going to last you 70 to 80 years. That's what the Bible says. And the things that you're going to get in this world, you done found out most of it breaks in the first two years you got it. So they sell warranties. And you buy them and you find out even they're not that good. You get a house and you got to spend thousands of dollars to keep it up. Nothing's worth nothing in this life that we think it is. But she knows, man, there's something in heaven that's going to last eternity. And she keeps trying to take you to the most important place. You ought to heed to what she says. If she's a mama like that, you ought to heed to what she says. You know, I've got a lot of books back there, Brother Tim, and a lot of them people has wrote in there that Jesus corrected her, got on to her for that desire. I don't see that. Read the story. All he did was say, for her to... For your two boys to get one on the right and one on the left, you know what it's going to cost. That's what I see. You read it. That's what I see. Man, for your two boys, do you know what you're really asking? If they're going to want to sit to the right, one's to sit to the left, this is what he says. He finally looks over at John and James and he says, Are you able to drink the same cup that I'm fixing to drink? Are you willing to suffer? Are you willing to die that you might be able to sit on the same throne that I'm fixing to sit on? Because the only way that you even deserve to get that close is you've got to drink the same cup. James and John standing beside their mama, I guarantee you that just about wiped them out, but they went, uh, yeah. She's probably squeezing her hands. Say yeah, say yeah. Hey, they said, yeah, I believe they are. He says, and you're going to drink from the same cup. He said, but where you seat in heaven is not mine to give. It's the Father's in heaven's. But I just want to focus on one thing and then we're done. Thank God for a mama that will take you to, to Jesus. Thank God for a mama that when you left all to go follow Jesus, that she didn't stop you and say, man, you need to really think about it. Are you going to leave that $100,000 job? You know that's going to be when your daddy, he's going to hand you all that business. And man, it's a good business. It's got hired servants. You're leaving all that to follow a man you don't know, to go to church. You're, I'm glad that they had a mama said, follow on, boys. Get as much as you can. And I'll help you get even closer. And y'all had a mama like that? Any of that ring a bell? That's the kind of mama I got. It's the kind of mama I had. She took me to Jesus many times. Many times. She grabbed me. She was one of them that believed that you take your kid to the altar. And if she, probably because I. Me and Randy couldn't have been left alone. We go to play it. But if she went to the altar, she grabbed our hands and we went with her. I heard her pray. I heard her say, Lord, these are my two boys. These are my boys. Please touch them. Please help them. Save them before it's too late. Watch over them. Direct their lives. Keep them out of harm's way. Weep and cry. That's what my mama did. You know what bothers me, Brother Chuck? Go ahead and come play. It's for to watch a mama do that over and over and over and over again. 
give everything she's got that that child might have. Turn her back on her own happiness because her happiness was to see her kids happy. And they just keep pouring out and they'll watch a kid stomp all over it. Ought not be, Brother Tim. Ought not be. You ought to love your mama today. She gave you birth. She carried you nine months. She fed you when you couldn't feed yourself. She clothed you when you didn't know how to put on clothes. She done and done and done. You ought to love on your mama today. You ought to put your arms around her if she's here. If she's at home, you ought to call her. If you can't get to her, you ought to call her. Say, Mama, Mama. I haven't always done right. I sure do love you, Mama. I wish I could give back to you just half of what you've done for me. And I tell you something, Mel, she's took you to the Lord so many times. It ought to be your time to take her to the Lord. You ought to come to the altar this morning and say, Lord, I got nothing for me, but I wish you'd bless my little mama. I wish you'd touch my mama. Maybe your mama's done that and gone, Mama, I just want to, I mean, Lord, I just want to say thank you for my mama. Would you please stand? Lord, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. I hope you know the Lord. I hope you had a mama that has take you to the Lord. But if not, God still wants you to be saved. Say, I don't believe in Him. That's all right. He believes in you. I don't know Him. He knows you. I don't want to have nothing to do with Him. Well, He did you. He died for you. The Lord's done all He could do to win you to Him. But just like a mama, He'll step back and let you do what you want to do. You make your decision. Whether you make the decision or not, you made it. Thank you for being here. Would you please sit down? We want to give something to all the mamas. I need all the kids to come up, but before we do that, just out of curiosity, who's our youngest mom? We got any moms below 25? Below 25. Any moms below 28? Just one. Youngest mom. Okay, any moms above? <laughs> Save me, Brother Tim. <laughs> any mamas above? Uh, let's start at 75. Raise your hands. Any moms above? 80s, raise your hand. Any moms above 85? You had to think about that one. Miss, Miss Tate, you above 85? 
I knew that's what, that's what all the women are doing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, let's stop right there. We got two or three above 85. I want to thank you for being faithful, being here this morning. But we want to give all the mama something. So I need all the kids, all the kids to come down. We're going to hand out something that the church has got for mothers. If you're a mama, would you please stand? If you're a mama, would you please stand? If you're a foster mama, that's all right, stand. Men? I love you. Thank you. All right, kids. Make sure every lady gets one. Don't, don't sit till you get a gift. Here you go. Yes, there's some in the other box. No, 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 don't do that. One per lady. Just one per lady that's standing. If you see a lady standing, give her one. Did you get one for your mama? Brother Tony? Miss Lynn, will you make sure that Miss Helen, I mean, Miss Helen's already get one. Miss Betty Christopher, Miss Janie Joyner, you got their two? Okay, you got Betty's. Janie Joyner, you didn't get one? She, I mean, he's one of my favorite ladies. Um, any other of our senior saint ladies that I'm that we don't want to miss out on? Uh, Y'all, if you know somebody, did anybody get Miss Gloria one? Okay, let's put this on her her row. 
Anybody that I'm leaving out? Yeah, but I thought you said, didn't you say? Betty Christopher, Betty Battles. All right. What it is, is I'm, I'm trying to get everybody in our church ladies that's had one, because anybody left over, if y'all want one for you, some, a lady that you know that deserves one, I wish you'd come get it for them. And then we run out, we run out. But I want to make sure all our church ladies got, did y'all got some? Y'all got them? Okay, good. Who? Miss Carol Elkins. Miss LaRue Parker. Miss Bobby. And who was the other name? Miss Linda York. Yes. Yeah, Miss Jimmy, Miss uh, Sherry. Take take this to Brother Tommy. Take this to Brother Tommy Castleberry. Brother Tommy, raise your hand so he knows who we're talking about. Miss Sandy. We'll give her one anyway. All right. Mamas, I hope your kids love on you today. I tried to get my best, try to get your kids to love on you. They ought to. If they don't, just go give them one of the wettest, sloppiest, mushiest kisses you could give them. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for blessing us with our mamas. We thank you for every touch, every word that they gave us. Lord, we thank you for their sound of their voice. Lord, we thank you for how they moved about and how they did. Lord, most of all, for how they loved us when sometimes we were so unlovable to them. Lord, help us to be more like them, to have a heart as big as the ocean. Lord, I thank you for you coming and die for us. I thank you for touching our mama's lives that they might be able to touch ours. Lord, do touch our mama's this morning. Give them a good, this day and give them a good day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See y'all Wednesday.